What's up, cruisers? Welcome to my Icon of the Seas review. Come aboard as we go on this seven-night Eastern Caribbean cruise. What's new on the ship? Well, everything. How's the new aqua theater? How's the entertainment? How's the food? What's new in the main dining room? We'll peek in the galley. What about the new bars? How about the new free food sections? We'll take you on some excursions. How family friendly actually is the ship? Does Surfside work? Is it adult friendly? We'll go through the buzz. Is the ship too big, too expensive, too crowded? Come along for the ride as we break it all down. Icon of the Seas. First things first, day one, embarkation. Icon sails out of Miami, Florida, which meant we had to fly out of the cold Northeast and head to Miami. Or in our case, we chose to fly into Fort Lauderdale. It's 26 miles from the cruise port, but it offered cheaper flights and cheaper hotels. Finally, cruise day had arrived. We scheduled an Uber the night before, and our drive to Cruise Terminal A was quick and easy. We arrived at our scheduled arrival time of 11 a.m. and expected long lines, and were surprised to see no lines at all as we walked right in. From curb to cruise ship, it was our quickest embarkation time ever of about 10 minutes. <laughs> Our cruise was February 24th, about a month after the inaugural sailing in January. And there it is, the Pearl. As you step onto the ship, the first thing you'll notice is the huge white orb-like staircase in the middle of the promenade. In the months leading up to the launch of Icon of the Seas, Royal Caribbean pumped out boatloads of hype around the Pearl. What is it? What will it do? As it turns out, it's just a staircase. A good looking staircase that plays a very functional role supporting the rooms and the rest of the ship above it. It also enables this massive bank of windows and ocean views that have never been seen before on a royal promenade. A response to one of the few criticisms about Oasis class ships that there was simply not enough places to see the ocean. A very nice change indeed. On our previous embarkation days, we were either in a race to book up entertainment options as soon as we got on the ship or book dinner reservations as soon as we got on the ship because we had the unlimited dining package. Fortunately, this time we weren't in a race to do anything and could relax and enjoy embarkation day. It was such a nice change. Not being in a rush, we just hung out in the Pearl Cafe for a little while and had a snack. After that, we headed to our safety muster station in the main dining room, and then conveniently, we were able to request a dining time change. After that, we headed to the main event, Surfside and Splashaway Bay. From there, we had only one thing left to do, and that was register our son at Adventure Ocean. By the time that was done, all the state rooms were open and it was time to find our room. We handpicked our cabin. We wanted to be close to the elevators, near the pool deck, but not right underneath it on the 14th floor. So we ended up with room 12718. And now it's time for a quick room review. We loved our room. We love ocean balcony rooms. For the first time, we ended up with a bed near the balcony door, which we loved as well. The flow of the room is much better. Quick note, the decorations in the room were a part of an anniversary gift purchased through the cruise planner. Not a bad deal. The room had a very modern look with indirect lighting all over the place. There's USB charging plugs next to the bed and on the desk. Most of these are the old school USB-A types. The desk had a European, US, and a multi-function outlet on it. There's an outlet on one side of the bed, which was slightly unusual. There's two outlets in the bathroom and one final outlet on my favorite feature of the room. This beautiful junk shelf that can hold your camera, your phone, your drinks, snorkels, whatever else you have. Before I go any further, it must be noted that as soon as my wife started unpacking, she immediately noted that there was a lot less storage space compared to Wonder of the Seas. 
and that's hard to argue with. Wonder of the Seas had his and her closets on the side of the bed. Icon's closet space is all located in the same area with, with a smaller, longer closet for dresses and a larger one for everything else. With that said, my wife is not a light packer. We had two large suitcases and we had ample space when we were done unpacking. There was a lot of chatter online about the use of these baskets that everybody hated. They didn't bother me at all. Since I didn't unpack, they actually helped me find my belongings much quicker. With that said, we also used the drawers over here on the desk as an impromptu dresser. Speaking of storage, there is a hidden closet behind this mirror. This is where the safe is located, but it also can be used for additional storage like shoes and such. Bathroom on Icon is a massive upgrade compared to normal bathrooms on Oasis class ships. The toilet's not cramped against the sink and the shelves. The shower itself is just simply larger. It doesn't have that awkward capsule shape to it. It has a seat in it even. It's a little less countertop space, but there's a lot more shelves. The whole bathroom is definitely a big upgrade. With everything unpacked, it's time to party at the Sail Away Party. Now it's time for the food and drink portion of this Icon review. On our previous cruise last year on Wonder, we tried out the unlimited dining package, which was good, but it had its problems. You can watch the review here, also linked below. This time we decided to stick to the main dining room and we didn't regret it one bit. Food was mouth-watering and delicious on most nights. I mean, look at that. Later in the cruise, there was a night or two where I didn't find any home runs for entrees on the menu. But most nights we felt that the appetizers, entrees, and desserts rivaled specialty restaurants that we went to last year. Our wait staff was excellent and it was such a pleasure to have them every night. The dining time was perfect. More on that in ship notes later in this video, a big change. It's clear the wait staff and the chefs were the best of the best and hand-picked to launch Icon. Our waiter was basically an entertainer and a magician for our six-year-old. Normally he hates eating, but he never complained once and he loved the menu. And now for the food allergy portion of this review. My wife suffers from a gluten allergy and a dairy allergy. In the past, Royal has done a very good job at accommodating her needs with gluten-free bread, etc. This time she was especially pleased with the gluten-free desserts that had increased from our previous cruises. The head waiter always made sure that her special dishes were pre-ordered. On the night we knew we were gonna miss the main dining room because of the Wizard of Oz, we didn't make any plans or arrangements with the head waiter. But in fact, they went out of their way and called us, set aside a meal for my wife that she hand delivered at the front of the main dining room at 9 p.m. after the show let out. That was service we were not expecting. On her last cruise, her biggest gripe was the difficulty or impossibility to find dairy-free butter or margarine. This time, that was definitely not the case. There was dairy-free butter waiting for in the main dining room and also available elsewhere. Happy to report that there is a gluten-free section at the back of the buffet. And pro tip, it's a good place to get made-to-order eggs with less of a line as well. We love our wait staff and the head waiter. They went above and beyond, and apparently they liked us too. We were able to go on an exclusive behind the scenes tour of the galley. Tonight we have 4,500 person lobster show. This was a really cool and unique experience. If it's free, it's for me. Icon of the Seas has a number of new free food options. Of course, they still have the classics, Park Cafe, everyone's favorite Sorrento's pizza, also gluten-free pizzas available. One bite, everybody knows the rules, 8.3. Who doesn't love El Loco Fresh, tacos, burritos, salsa, chips, and guac? Pro Cafe is the first new free food option you'll see. Supposedly, there's some items that cost money. I never saw them. Basically, everything there is free. They have snacks, cookies, and donuts, but they also have substantial sandwiches as well. And yes, gluten-free sandwiches. It's also a specialty coffee stop. It can be slightly intimidated because there's usually a long line for coffee. I have a tip for that at the end of the video. But there's two lines, one for coffee and one for food, and the food is always a much shorter line. If you're anything like me and you like breakfast sandwiches, this is the only place to go. One of my favorite food items of the entire cruise was the steak, egg, and cheese sandwich. Also, Pearl Cafe is open 24 hours. Speaking of breakfast, Surfside Eatery is another good alternative to the buffet. While it's geared for kids, it's much less chaotic than the buffet at breakfast time. And if you're just looking for some eggs and bacon, this is probably the way to go. 
While we're in Surfside, we might as well talk about Surfside Bites. Knowing about it prior to the cruise, I kind of wrote it off as an afterthought, but I was mistaken. This is good, free, grab-and-go food. We have hot dogs and cheeseburgers. I had a delicious pizza toasty. My kid had popcorn chicken he loved. But there's a new free food king of the mountain on board, Aquadome Market. This place took our family's free food crown away from El Loco Fresh. My wife loved the gluten-free, dairy-free Mediterranean options. My son loved the mac and cheese loaded. I enjoyed the Asian, but sometimes on a cruise you just want a sandwich, and that's exactly what I got. While Aquadome Market is the best new free food option, Base Camp is not. It's also a takeout kind of grab and go place, which traditionally are always free. Here, the only thing free is a hot dog, pretzel, or tater tots. They have a grilled chicken sandwich for $9. A smash burger for $11. Coco K has a free chicken sandwich that's probably better. And a free steak and cheese sandwich that's probably better than the $11 smash burger. Come on, really? Speaking of spending money you don't have to, head to Deserted if you want to spend $20 on a milkshake. At the time of this recording, your drink package won't do anything to discount that milkshake, but apparently if you have the drink package, you can get a root beer float for free without alcohol. All in all, our family loved the new free food options, and it's a big step up from Oasis-class ships, which already had a decent amount of free food options. You'll need a drink to wash down all that free food. It's now time for the Deluxe Beverage Package Review. Let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. It's expensive, $1,200 for two people over a week, and that was the best price. Often the price was over $80. If you buy it at $88, it's over $1,400. Finally, it did drop to the same price that we had on Wonder during a pre-Christmas sale, $73 a day. So monitoring the price is important, and depending on when you book your cruise and when your sailing is, the price might not go down under 80. Important to note that if you buy it at the higher price and the price does go down, you can always cancel and buy it again without any fees. Yes, you can easily save money by buying your drinks individually, but if you do drink every day, enjoy stocking your fridge with bottled water, have multiple specialty coffees each day, you won't be saving any money. The main reason to buy the drink package is convenience. You don't have to think about it. You prepay it a long time before the cruise, and on Icon, they can kind of justify the higher price. There's multiple new bars, and each bar has its own unique cocktail experience, whether it's an espresso martini, 1400 time for gin, or this thing with an orchid. This is not a low-rent drink package. With these new specialty cocktails you've never heard of, are you really going to want to drop $14 on something just to try it? No. With the drink package, you can try it with no worries, and if you don't like it, like this disgusting toasted marshmallow old-fashioned, no big deal. It is now time for the family-friendly, kid-friendly portion of this review. The boardwalk on Oasis ships was family-friendly with the carousel and the playground-type things, but Surfside elevates that and takes it to a whole new level. A new carousel's there, I like the old one personally. A new play area. And of course, a whole new splash away bay with some of the best pool view options on the ship. Prior to the cruise, I was a little worried that the splash away bay size would be small, and it is much smaller than the splash away bay on Wonder. But it seemed to work. I was also worried that there wouldn't be enough seating for adults, and there's ample seating for adults. And the Lemon Post was one of our favorite bars. There's a toddler section in the back on the port side and a very nice pool for kids at the back of the ship with two different depth levels. Unfortunately, this area was closed a few times on our cruise. I'm not sure whether it was because of high winds or rough seas or if it just has limited hours. But all in all, we and our child were very pleased with the new Splash Away Bay. Right underneath Surfside is Adventure Ocean. If you have a young kid, it's probably one of the reasons why you're booking on Royal. Excellent free childcare. Like everything else on Icon, Adventure Ocean was kicked up a notch. Six-year-olds and above can get some screen time on multiple devices. I can't wait to go here. They even incorporated the bold new concept of having windows. But the family-friendly, kid-friendly nature of Icon doesn't end there. There's touches of it all around the ship with multiple slides. Who needs the stairs when you can take this? 
There's rope swings and beds on one of the pool decks. Who could forget about the free mini golf? And for the slightly older kids, there's probably the best water park at sea, Thrill Island. Like any water park, there's always a line to go down the slides. Early in the morning's a good time to go. And of course, there's sports courts, climbing wall. Who could forget about the flow rider? And whatever this thing is. You and your children will not be bored on Icon of the Seas. Day four, St. Kitts. There's beach and snorkel options available. Because our kid loves trains, we chose a scenic train ride. Unlike some excursions where it seems like you're just waiting in line to go from one place to another the whole time, this one ran smoothly. We got right on to buses. Good morning, everybody. Drove about 10, 15 minutes to the train terminal. Our bus driver was funny and educational. Give us a little history lesson before and after the train ride. And St. Kitts is a beautiful Caribbean island. It's not very developed. It has a very different feel from other Caribbean islands. The train ride also proved to be a great way to see the island and how people live and work there now with some local culture and some rum, which doesn't hurt. And you get dropped off right near the ship in town where you can do some souvenir shopping or you can just chill or lime, as they say here the No Rush Bar and enjoy some cheap locally brewed beer. If you like cheap local beer, hit that thumbs up button. Day five, St. Thomas. For this excursion, we definitely wanted to hit up a beach, but we also wanted to see the island a bit. So we chose the Skyride, Drake's Seat, and Maggins Bay option, which was great. This was a little more traditional, waiting in line by the ship for your group to be called and moved on to some buses. The first part of this excursion is just a simple drive to a lookout point. This area was prepared in remembrance of Sir Lord Francis Drake. Good place to take some pictures and not much else. Then we headed to the beach first thing in the morning, Maggins Bay. It's billed as one of the top 10 beaches in the world. I'm not here to dispute that, it was beautiful. The sand was beautiful, the water was crystal clear. It's a good thing that we were there in the morning because we left around noon and it was packed. And as you see, when we were leaving, about to get more packed. If you're going to come to this beach, do it in the morning. Then it was off to the sky ride. A gondola ski lift type thing that takes you up to Paradise Point. This probably had an hour long line wrapping around the whole building, but with the Royal Caribbean excursion, we skipped 90% of it. The ride did provide some amazing views and some unsettling bumps as you go past the tower. But it's not scary at all. And it's totally worth it for some more priceless views of St. Thomas. This part of the excursion did feel a little bit hurried. Being that it was lunchtime, it would have been a nice place to grab lunch. But we only had about an hour before we had to be back at the bottom where the bus would pick us up. So we just had a drink and did some quick shopping. Followed by a lovely open air shuttle ride back to the cruise port along the coast. With more shopping and tourist options before you board. After a beautiful sea day, day seven, Coco K. We had been to Coco K two times and both times were, well, perfect days. The weather was great, the water was great. This trip to Coco K was, well, not perfect. Coco K is the same latitude as Miami and being that it's the middle of the winter, sometimes the weather is not the greatest. Unfortunately, our trip, we had to deal with high winds, and low water temperature. I was looking forward to spending some money for the first time as I pre-booked and rented a jet ski. That did not happen because of the high winds. Everything was canceled during our stay. Norwegian's cruise line's neighboring island tried to dock a ship there and it didn't, it left. So we still considered ourselves fortunate that we were able to go to Kokoke. Our kid didn't mind the weather at all and had a blast building sandcastles and playing on the pirate ship. Even Icon's dog Rover didn't seem to mind the weather. So it wasn't perfect, but it still was a great day at Coco Cay. It is now time for the entertainment portion of this Icon review. I'm beginning to sound like a broken record because the entertainment on Icon is kicked up a notch. Don't wanna Water show, aqua action was incredible. It's a must see. It's definitely better than Intense on Wonder and ranks up there near Aqua 80 on Oasis. 
the new Aqua Theater works well. There's no wind to disrupt the show, and we didn't have rough seas to disturb it. The show will keep you on the edge of the seat, which is good because the seat has no seat back. They're just wooden benches. In the old Aqua Theater, you would have metal benches with metal seat backs. But you want to get there early, and there are some actual seats with tables in the back available. The bench didn't bother me at all, but if you're the type of person that likes to sit on something soft, then you might want to bring a towel or a sweater to sit on. In addition to the new Aqua Theater, there's a brand new ice skating rink. It's oval. There are two different ice shows on Icon. The main show seen here, Starburst Elemental Beauty, and a children's show, Once Upon a Time, A King's Royal Ball. As for the kids' ice show, we were not able to reserve this online prior to the cruise for unknown reasons, and ultimately, by the time we learned about the show, it had already come and gone and we had missed it. But Starburst is a much improved show over the ice show on Wonder of the Seas Ice Spectacular 365, which seemed to just cater to kids' fascinations with their phones and social media. Elemental goes in the opposite direction and is actually somewhat educational, in fact, all the entertainment on Icon was completely void of all the social media buzz and likes that seemed to be forced into all the entertainment on Wonder. But if you are a fan of the bro dancing, worry not, it is here. We thoroughly enjoyed the ice show and would recommend it for anybody. Totally. <laughs> now for the granddaddy of them all, the Wizard of Oz. This show is so well done. The orchestra, the music is amazing. The singing and dancing is amazing. The sets are fantastic. It's a huge success. The show's about an hour and a half long and it flies by. I honestly thought it was an hour long. Our child loved the show despite not liking the movie very much. A huge step up from any Effector show or Cats. And now it's time for ship notes. If you've ever been on a Royal Caribbean cruise, you probably know that the main dining room times are awful. You either eat at around five or eight, and I eat at neither of those times. On this and other cruises, Royal Caribbean has been trialing a third dining time. And when we got on the ship, we were able to switch to this new third dining time at 645. I can't say enough good things about this dining time. Despite the fact that they had to close the doors and not let people in until 6.45 so they could clear out the previous dining, even with that, it was a heaven sent. Hopefully in the future, this will be a bookable time for all cruises. Another big new change is destination elevators. Yes, elevator software. Some people have called it a game changer. I'm not so sure about that, but it definitely does help reduce the lines. It's far from perfect. Sometimes you'll be assigned a letter and then the door opens and it's completely full. In the past, sometimes we would get on the elevator knowing that we just needed to get to the other side of the ship. And once we would see the screen with Central Park or maybe the pool deck, we would decide that is not an option anymore. You need to know where you're going before you get into the elevator. As for the ocean balcony cabins, I am happy to report there are usable tables. Unlike Wonder of the Seas, you can order room service breakfast and start your day eating breakfast outdoors on your balcony. What could be better? There's no point in mentioning the internet anymore. It's great, fast speeds, no dead spots anywhere. The electronic cruise compass is still garbage and doesn't work half the time. Fortunately, I took a tip from one of the viewers of our Wonder Review and went to guest services and requested a cruise compass to be delivered every day, and that was fantastic. There are now two, Bosco, two ice cream places on the ship called Sprinkles. Neither of them actually have sprinkles. There are places to charge your phone everywhere, USB ports in your room all over the place, and wireless charging even in the casino. Speaking of the casino, it's big and it's grand. It's split in the middle by the bar. It's basically a mirror of itself on each side. I will say sometimes the flow of the casino is not ideal. You just end up walking into dead ends. Huge shout out to the casino host, world famous YouTube star Chris Wong Vlogs. Super nice guy and little known fact, he's seven feet tall. Now it's time to talk about some of the media coverage or the online chatter about Icon of the Seas. Is the ship too large? Is it too big? Is it too expensive? And is it too crowded? Is Icon too big? It's the biggest cruise ship in the world, but is it too big? Well, being that it's 10 feet longer than Wonder of the Seas, it's not really that much bigger. They measure cruise ship sizes and weight, and who cares about that? For all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same size as all the Oasis-sized ships. 
If you think or thought Oasis class ships are too big, then yes, Icon is too big. There is a huge contingency of cruisers that love smaller ships. They're more intimate, supposedly less crowded, have access to smaller ports. I think most of these people think that being on a smaller ship kind of equates to being on a private yacht sailing through the Caribbean. There is no denying Icon is a huge ship, but with a huge ship comes huge ship benefits like outdoor open air venues like Central Park. This is one of our favorite places. Is this available on your private yacht? With huge ships, you can also get huge water parks, huge casinos, huge wide open promenades, more outdoor venues like Boardwalk or Surfside. Also, large ships tend to fare better in foul weather. So I can definitively answer in my personal preference, Icon is not too big. Is Icon too expensive? I initially balked at this news, hearing about seven, $8,000 inside cabins. Knowing that, 12 months before the cruise, we booked our hand-selected Ocean View balcony room for $4,400. It wasn't cheap, but we booked it. From there, however, the price continued to go up and up and up. I repriced a similar room several times. It went from $5,000 to $6,000, even $7,000 at one point. While we were on the ship, we were hoping to book a very similar cruise next year on Icon. And unfortunately, we couldn't justify the cost. It was simply too expensive. We ended up booking an Ocean View balcony room on Wonder next year at the same time at half the cost. So yes, Icon, too expensive. Is it too crowded? This. I will have to punt on a little bit because our ship sailed at 5,900 people. For the first month or so of Icon sailings, they basically did a soft opening. So we were sailing at more than 1,000 passengers below capacity. And I can't give an accurate answer on whether it's too crowded. I will say if you're looking for a seat by the pool on a sea day, you're probably not going to find one if there's 3,000 passengers on the ship or 7,000 passengers on the ship. All the pool deck seating I saw was occupied, with a towel at least. I mean, take a look at this. There's no available seats here, and there's no pool nearby either. Pool seats aside, flow and crowdedness of the ship is a completely different thing, and Icon handles that quite well. Even though we were sailing at nearly 6,000 passengers, at times the ship felt very empty. So while I can't give a definitive answer on whether the ship's too crowded or not, other than pool chairs, it's probably not going to be too crowded. There has also been complaints that the ship is not adult friendly. Gone is the solarium. Adults wanting a vacation from kids are left with just this hideaway area. I never went to it, but it wasn't exactly calling my name either. A solarium, it is not. But Overlook is kind of like a solarium without any pools, but it's not the same thing. This is the most peaceful place of the ship by far. If you're the type of person that spends seven days on a cruise basically in the solarium the entire time, you will be disappointed. So there may be some truth to the fact that Icon is not the most adult-friendly ship out there. I mean, who's complaining about this? Did you watch any of the advertisements? I guess not. In conclusion, we loved our cruise. We loved the ship. Our son loved the ship. We want to go back. We will go back, just not next year. If you can get a good deal, I highly recommend it. It's now time for me to ask you to do a small favor and like and subscribe to this channel. It costs you nothing. I spent a ton of time on this. My wife will thank you if you do. But more importantly, tell me what you think. Leave a comment below. And now that you've watched this long, I can offer you two small tips maybe three. Don't forget, everybody has some free casino play on their CPASS card. In the first day or two, I believe, it could be $2, it could be $4. I had $4 of mine and I turned it into $80. It's possible. Let's say you want to play a table game, you didn't bring a ton of cash, you can actually play and charge it to your CPASS card. However, there will be a $5 fee for about 100 bucks. You can avoid this fee by simply going to a slot machine, putting in your CPASS card, adding $100 to your slot machine, hitting the print receipt button, taking that ticket and giving it to the crap dealer. There you go. You have $100 and you avoided the fee. And the final tip, if you like specialty coffees, there will always be a line at the Pearl Cafe. There will be a line at the Vitality Cafe. There will not be a line if you go to the buffet in the back on the right hand side. There is also a specialty coffee person and you won't have to wait in line. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. 
from the Mediterranean on Voyager of the Seas. It's over. You can stop watching.